Hello and welcome back to Code Searcher. Hold on just a second, guys. My computer has a little glitch. There we go. All right. Covenant with Mini. As I told you in the last video, we'll do this. Uh, I'll also put the PDF for this table down in the bottom as, as well. Um, this comes at a very small skip. As I told you before, 3666. Covenant Mini. Right here. And it is connected to the land. You can see here of the land. Uh, the orthodoxy is in here. Again, 2015, 2016 is the years that stand out. Um, you can see here in the green, you got 2015 running there, which is, it has proximity, but is not as good as 2016, which you can see right down here in the same line that has um, of the land here. Uh, the United States is here several times. You can see here, um, right here, connected to Israel. And I think there was another one. I'm not sure what it was. You kind of get lost in these things after a while, um, remembering where everything is. Uh, Mahmoud Abbas is in here. Kadima. Kadima is the liberal... Um, party from the Knesset, by the way, and uh, probably are going to be the orchestrators of whatever deal that comes out of this. This has got atomic war uh, in here. Uh, Islam is connected. Obama is in here. Uh, several places he is here. Um, one interesting thing is the way his name points to Gog and Magog. Now, this very same line, Ezekiel, um, his name appears in the line further, well, to the right of this this table, uh, off to the side here. Uh, his name appears in there, in the line. Uh, we got Iran, Russia is, is here, um, Great Britain is also in here. Uh, however, I didn't use everything because, as you can see, it just gets so clustered. Uh, I, I mainly just keep the, the bigger uh, terms in... Um, because it would just get so full, we wouldn't be able to to um, understand what's happening. Now, the reason that Mars is in here, yeah, uh, if you recall, back during uh, well, I've been looking from since Elenin, uh, Siding Spring, Ison, um, Ison and Siding Spring, I believe, were harbingers of of war. Of, of, you know, it was just telling us war is coming. You can see Mars appears down here in uh, that one verse. And Blood Moons, written backward, right here. 2015 appears in this line. 2015 also appears in this. Now, that could mean that they were talking about this plan uh, in 2015. Um, there's nothing that says it's going to happen in 2015 or 2016, but it, those day, those years appear. What they mean, um, Yahuwah is the only one that knows. We can only speculate. Uh, Netanyahu, in the Sea of Ishmael, is also here. King of Babylon up the top and then we also have a Shemitah in that verse right there Shemitah is also vertically right next to uh, the axis term which is right here also an anomaly here which was really interesting which had the Mahdi in it and I thought Hamas was also there but uh, there's an anomaly vertical it says the allowing of fire the allowing of fire Obama's name runs right through there what does that mean it could be, uh, you know, war. War is here in the plain text three times. You got it once here, once there, and once up here at the top. It's also encoded in the same line um, as judgments is down here. You see the M or the the Mem next to the uh, word judgment and the Lama, the Chet, the Mem, and the He on down this way, which is war all in one line. Again, I told you this. All these verses are, are end time verses. Uh, we have a devouring fire in here. Uh, the rivers dried up. Uh, the temple is in here several times. We also have it over here. The Betak Mikdash. Um, it happened on my Sabbath in the yellow right there. It happened on my Sabbath. Mars is also in this one line here, connected to the Pharaoh of Egypt. Um, Shimon Perez, his name is also in here. You can see Perez right there. Uh, and I believe that's all of the terms that, uh, 
that I have here. But I'll, also, I'll put this PDF down at the bottom so you guys can take a look at it too. Thank you to Louis Vega who puts together these for me uh, and uh, on his own time, folks. So let's go over to the actual table. This is the actual table here. Uh, and, and the one we were just looking at, the, the PDF of it, Korea was not in there. I just happened to find this here recently. Korea, right across uh, Rouhani, Mahmoud Rouhani, is right there. Uh, Khomeini is also here. I should have mentioned that too. It's in the other. Uh, Khomeini is here. So um, all the major hitters are present in this table so uh, we may not run through all of these verses folks because I've, I've done this table before you can find it in the archives and we'll hit a, a few of them um, like this one with the abominations I believe there's abominations in there yes 1621 22 is the one that has abominations in it. and it says then Thou hast slain my children and delivered them to cause them to pass through the fire for them. And all thine abominations and thy whoredoms thou hast not remembered in the days of thou hast not remembered the days of thy youth when thou wast naked and bare and was polluted with thy blood. And it came to pass all thy wickedness. Woe, woe. Here's some woes, folks. For those of you following what's happening in Revelation. Woes. Here's two woes right here. Woe. Woe unto thee, saith Adonai Elohim, uh, that thou hast built unto thee an eminent place, and hast made a high place on every street. Sky, skyscrapers. Uh, this next verse, and that was, by the way, in Ezekiel. Uh, this next verse is also Ezekiel. 20th chapter, verse 19 is where we are. In the blue and white. And I am your, Elo uh, your Adonai, your Elohim. Walk in my statutes and keep my judgments and do them. And hallow my Sabbaths. And they shall be a sign between you and me that ye may know that I am the Adonai, your Elohim. Um, so it's a sign forever between you and the children to keep his Sabbaths. Not just the children of Israel. We're all his children. His Sabbaths are important to him I don't care what what some of these you know modern day commentators will have to say about keeping the Sabbath and, and the feast days and that's all that's all Old Testament like old means invalid uh, not so he said forever these are my Moedim and that's why I've been uh, convicted to keep the Moedim because they're important to my father uh, this next one is Ezekiel twenty one thirty six, and uh, and I will pour out mine indignation upon thee, and I will blow against thee with a fire of my wrath, and deliver thee into the hand of brutish men, skillful to destroy. And I told you about the sword of Yahuwah that is coming on the land, folks. It's judgment coming, and here is he. He's telling us. Um, and, there, and thou shalt be a fuel for the fire, and thy blood shall be in the midst of the land, and thou shalt not be remembered no more, Rem no more remembered. For I, the Adonai, have spoken it. He has spoken it. This next one is also Ezekiel. We're in uh, the 28th, 29th chapters. Uh, I don't know why I had that one highlighted. 26. And they shall dwell safely therein, and shall build houses, and plant vineyards, and yea, they shall dwell in confidence. And when I have executed judgments upon all those that despise them around about them, remember in Ezekiel, in uh, Psalm 83, Ezekiel 38, they'll be surrounded by Muslims. And they shall know that I am the Adonai their Elohim. And then I had here, and it's just probably not significant, but it's in the table. Um, so I'm not going to set a date, but I will show you that uh, it mentions a, spe a specific time, which is in the 10th year, in the 10th month, in the 12th day of the month, uh, the word of Adonai came unto me. Now this could have been 
Um, of course, in the context of the verse itself, implies of time. But if you apply that to the end times, uh, in the 10th year, 2010, um, in the 10th month, uh, so and so. So whatever that means, it, it, there could have been plans. There could have been something put together. I don't know. But uh, I just thought it was interesting that that particular time um, is mentioned in, in this table. So getting on down here, this is the one with Gog and Magog um, here. And this is Ezekiel 38. And uh, we'll just start at first two. Son of man, set thy face against Gog and the land of Magog. And the chief prince, Meshach, Tubal, and prophesy against them. And say, thus saith the Adonai Elohim, behold, I am against thee, O Gog, chief prince of Meshach and Tubal. And I will turn thee back and put hooks in thy jaws and bring thee forth and all mine ar thine army and horses and horsemen and all them clothed with all sorts of armor, even a great company, bucklers and shields, all of them handling swords. That sounds like war. It indeed it is. Gog and Magog is uh, typically viewed by the, by the Jewish people uh, as a time of uh, excuse me, Sukkot is viewed uh, historically as the time for Gog and Magog. Is uh, prophecies from the sages that say that that's when it's going to happen. Now, I did see a name here that I forgot to um, point out in the table. The Pope and a general from the Israeli army, his name is Mophaz, right here. Mophaz is in here. Now, the interesting thing about uh, this general is he is a Persian Jew. He was born and raised in Iran as a Jewish man. I think is around the time of the uh, revolution when uh, Khomeini come in, um, the Ayatollah, that uh, he he moved to Israel um, for, for obvious reasons. But he's a Persian. Could this be an Antichrist figure? I don't know. Uh, it's, it's really interesting. His name appears here. It, it's also with the pay, and his name is the Pope. You see here, hey, pay, vav, pay, pope. Uh, so back to the verses. I don't know why I skipped that in the uh, PDF, but my apologies. So let's just go to that verse where Mophaz is. This is a Hosea verse, uh, chapter 4. And they their drink is sour, and they have committed whoredom. When you have a sour drink, that is wormwood, folks bitterness uh, their drink is sour and they have committed whoredom continually her rulers do ha her rulers with shame do love give ye the wind hath bound her up her wings and they shall be ashamed because of their sacrifices and then it says in verse uh, 1 of chapter 5 and hear ye this O priest hearken ye house of Israel and give ye O house of the king, for judgment is towards you, and because you have been a snare on Mitzvah, and a net spread on Tabor. Mm. I believe this is also Hosea. We're in the 10th chapter in this line here. And again, Yahuwah puts all of these verses on. Uh, let me get my little prop. A cylinder. And he chooses... Which verses will appear on that cylinder? And this cylinder could be different sizes. It could be a small cylinder or a large cylinder. This happens to be a smaller cylinder. We're looking at 2336. Excuse me, 2, excuse me, 3666. I'm tired, folks, and I got a bad headache looking at tables all day. So uh, please forgive me. But anyway, he puts them on these, this cylinder for a reason. It's not just an accident. These just didn't happen on accident. Okay. So uh, he's telling us something here. And that's why I spend so much time looking for these codes. So I'll start here with uh, verse 6. And it shall be also carried into Assyria for a present to the king Jerob. Ephraim shall receive shame and Israel shall be ashamed of his own counsel. As for Samaria, her king is cut off, and as for as the foam of the water, the high places of Avon, the son of Israel, shall be destroyed, 
the thorn and the thistle shall come up in their altars, and they shall say to the mountains, Cover us, and to the hills, Fall on us. Have you heard that? You've heard that before. You know, they're, they're building these underground tunnels. This is what Yahuwah says to them. Or, or they say to Yahuwah, Cover us in the hills to fall on us because of the wrath that's coming. O Israel, thou hast sinned again, uh, from the days of Gibbeth. There they stood in the battle again against Gibbeth. The children of iniquity did not overtake them. It is in my desire that I should chasten them and the people that shall be gathered against them, and they shall bind themselves with two furrows. And Ephraim shall be as a heifer that is taught and love to tread out the corn. But I passed over upon her fair neck, and I will make Ephraim to ride. Judah shall plow, and Jacob shall break his clods. Now, we're, we're talking about the ten tribes here. Ephraim is the ten tribes that are lost. If, if you recall, Ephraim and Manasseh are from Joseph. Joseph. Uh, one of the twelve brothers, um, his father prophesied when he found him again in Egypt, he put his hands on his two children and told him, uh, Manasseh shall be great, but Ephraim shall be greater, shall be the fullness of the Gentiles. This is where you were grafted in into the family of Yahuwah. Uh, as, and you may not even realize this. You may set yourself apart and, and, and say Israel is set apart from um, that's, that's not nothing to do with us, but you could very well be mistaken and not even know it. Um, there is evidence of where the tribes went when they were scattered. Um, Ephraim and Manasseh are typically going to be from the Isles of Great Britain, uh, uh, Scotland and Ireland and America and Canada is Ephraim Manasseh is where they mostly went. So if you're from there, great chance that you're part of that tribe. Unless you, you migrated there from somewhere else, uh, India or something. Uh, I know Great Britain has a lot of uh, immigrants. Next verse is in Joel. And we're in the, uh, well, it starts in the first chapter and goes into the second chapter. So let's just read. And the beast of a field cry loud unto thee, and the rivers are all dried up. If you remember down in the, the table here, I should, uh, the rivers are all dried up. And there's a prophecy about the Euphrates and the Tigris drying up so the armies can pass over them. The rivers are dried up. And uh, chapter 2, verse 1, Blow ye the trumpet in Zion. Sound the alarm on my holy mountain. Let all the inhabitants of the land tremble, for the day of Yahuwah cometh, and for it is nigh at hand. A day of darkness and gloominess, a day of clouds and thick darkness, as the morning spread upon the mountains, a great people and a strong, there hath not been ever the like, neither shall there be more after it, even to the years of many generations, a fire, uh, excuse me, a fire devoured before them, and behind them flame burneth, the land as the garden of Eden before them, and behind them desolate wilderness, yea, nothing shall escape them. The appearance of them is like the appearance of horsemen, horses and horsemen. And so they run. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I got a feeling that's the four horsemen there. In Amos, in this next chapter, you see how they're clustered together. And not normally that way. Thus saith Adonai, for three transgressions of the children of Ammon, and for four I will not turn away their punishment thereof, because they have ripped up the women, the child of the Gilad, and they uh, might enlarge their border. But I will kindle a fire in a wall of Rabbah, and it shall devour the places thereof, and the shouting in the day of battle, and the tempest in the day of the whirlwind. Whirlwind? Strong, fury, furious winds? Um, I hear when there's a nuclear blast, uh, the the winds from that the uh, concussive force could reach several hundred miles an hour um, so uh, I will send fire upon Moab and devour the places of Kiroth carry off and Moab shall die with tumult with shouting and with the sound of the trumpet uh, 
Is that also Amos? This is also Amos down here where war is in the actual uh, chapter there that there's several verses that this runs through. So let's read that. Chapter 5, verse 20. Shall not the day of Yahuwah be of darkness and not of light, even very dark, with no brightness in it? I hate and I despise your feast days and will not smell your solemn assemblies. Though ye offer me burnt offerings and your meat offerings, I will not accept them, neither will I regard the peace offerings of your fat beast. Take thou away from me the noise of thy songs, and I will not hear the melody of thy vials. So let the judgment run down those waters, and the righteousness as mighty men. Have ye offended unto me sacrifices and offerings in the children of forty years, O house of Israel? But ye have borne the tabernacle of your Molech. And Molech is the one they were sacrificing babies to. Uh, America's been doing that in the form of abortions. And so is Israel. America and Israel are one and two in, in two things in the world. They, they stand out far and above anyone else. Abortions and gay marriage or gay uh, populations. That's the other. The other thing, there's three actually. Uh, they are the number one exporters of pornography is the other. So uh, nothing to be proud of there. Uh, Amos. No, that's not Amos. That's Obadiah. One one. The vision of Obadiah thus saith Adonai Elohim concerning Edom. We have heard a rumor from uh, the Adonai, and an ambassador is sent among the heathen. Arise ye, and let us rise up, rise against her in battle. Behold, I have made thee, thee small among the heathen, and thou art greatly despised. The pride of thine heart it hath deceived thee, and thou wilt dwell us in the clefts of the rocks. Again, in the rocks. Whose habitation is high, and saith in his heart, Who shall bring me down to the ground? Thou, uh, though thou exalt thyself as the eagle, and I think this is a reference to America uh, in here, and thou hast set thy nest among the stars, thence will I bring thee down, saith Yehoah. If thieves came unto thee, if robbers by night, how art thou cut off? Would thou not have stolen till they had enough? If the grape gatherers came unto thee, would thou not have leave some grapes? How are things of Esau searched out? How are the hidden things sought up? Uh, and then we we'll go down to the next one, which has Mars in it. Excuse me, Mars in it, uh, which is the from Nahum, right here, it's 3, 7 is where we'll be reading, and see what Nahum has to say, and it shall come to pass, that all that look upon thee, shall flee from thee, and say, Nineveh is laid waste, who will bemoan her, whence, excuse me, whence shall I seek comforters for these, for thee, uh, so a reference to Nineveh, and if you recall that story, who was going to destroy that city. And also, here's a little uh, tidbit that Gil has discovered. Uh, Nineveh, the time of Jonah, the 40 days, the sign in the sky was also Nibiru. Um, and he's shown that in his models. And here is um, a mention of, and you got Mars in there. So there's a planet connected. Of course, when we were looking at Siding Spring, uh, and I was expecting a deep impact, uh, the thing to remember there was the sign that it created. It was Mars and a comet, the god of war and the harbinger of destruction coming together. Uh, this next one with blood moons is Zephaniah. In the first chapter, and then we'll start. Where we were. Verse 8. And it shall come to pass in the day of Yahuwah's sacrifice that I will punish the princes and the king's children and all that's, that are clothed in strange apparel. And in that day also will I punish those that leap on the threshold, which fill their masters' houses with violence and deceit. And it shall come to pass in that day, saith Yahuwah, that there shall be a noise, a cry from the fish gate, and a howling from the second and 
great crashing from the kill, hills. How ye inhabitants, Mactesh, and all the merchant people are cut down. Who are the merchant people? And they that bear silver are cut off. And it shall come to pass at that time that I will search Jerusalem with candles and punish the men that are set or settled on their leaves. That say in their heart, the Adonai will not do good, neither will he do evil. Therefore, their goods shall become a booty, and their houses a desolation. And they shall build their houses, but not inhabit them. And they shall plant vineyards, but not drink of the wine thereof. In that great day of Yahuwah is near, it is near, and hastening greatly. Even the voice of the day of Yahuwah, the mighty men shall cry there bitterly. As that day, excuse me, that day is a day of wrath, a day of trouble, a day of distress, a day of wasteness and desolation, a day of darkness and gloominess. Joel just told us that. Here we got um, Zephaniah telling us the same thing. A day of clouds and thick darkness, a day of the trumpet, and again, an alarm against fenced cities and against high towers. And I will bring distress upon men, and they shall walk like blind men, because they have sinned against Adonai, and their blood shall be poured out as dust, and their flesh as dung. Now, folks, uh, the covenant of many is a point in uh, eschatology, or those of us that search out in the end times. Um, it's very important. I mean, this is something that's mentioned uh, in Daniel about the beast. And here you see it in the codes at a skip of 366. And then Yehovah puts all these terms with the corresponding verses. Are we to ignore it? And though there be those that come to discredit the codes, to put out misinformation, fake codes, or whatever, it's because they don't want you to know this. Now, if Mossad... And the CIA and Homeland Security, um, Homeland, or NSA, which, by the way, search codes. And that is absolutely true, folks. If it were just a parlor trick, would the CIA and Mossad be using codes to predict the future, to try to change the future? And why would there be such a effort to pull me off the internet to hack me to make my life hell i've even had death threats folks and there may even come a time where they uh, take me out but i'm not going to stop showing you what's here because it means something it's not just there because it's there it's there because we're supposed to find it we're told in proverbs that it is the honor of kings to search out a matter in the glory of Hua, to hide things. And I may have that backwards. Uh, but that's what I'm doing here. I'm searching out those things that he's had hidden for us. For us, not from us. This is for us. He hid it from the enemy. So hang on to that. Guys, I just want to thank um, those of you that, that subscribed that support this ministry and that uh, send encouraging messages. Um, I appreciate you guys. Um, for those of you who take time to talk to me personally on the phone or in Skype, um, I appreciate you so much, the prayers and the uh, encouragement. Um, and I hope I can um, return that back to you uh, in some way. Um, I don't know what the rest of the year has in store, folks. and I'm just taking it day by day. This is not a crystal ball. Um, there's a lot of prayer involved, a lot of meditation, and then uh, revelation from the Ruach HaKodesh to, um, to find these things. And then I put them out for you. Um, but I need your help. I can't do this by, by myself. Uh, there's a m tremendous amount of hours searching to the point where now I'm, I'm, I have a headache because my eyes are just hurting so bad from looking at a computer screen. Uh, ten hours, but this is what I do, and Yahuwah provides through you my sustenance, my living, 
my, you know, drink. You know, in a previous video, we talked about the inheritance of the Levites, and there is no inheritance with the tribes. Yahuwah takes care of his Levites. And so uh, that's what he's shown me in this. So a couple of years ago, he had my uncle in a dream. He told him in a dream to fire me um, and to do this. And he has supported this ever since with your donations. When he has laid it on your heart to help this ministry, you've responded and has uh, kept this ministry going. And I thank you and I praise Yahuwah for sending you. So shalom. And I'll see you in the next video, folks. Be blessed in Yeshua's name.